this video is bound to teach you music theory in as limited time and as less time as possible the music theory that you require to start producing your own songs and start writing your own melodies your chord progressions and you know get out of that foundation that you feel you do not know music theory which is bounding you to not make proper songs and something like that so i am here to help you out with this video stick throughout the video and you will learn all that you need to produce your own songs and to make your own melodies and composition hello guys welcome back to the channel this is sir gama and today i'll be teaching you music theory it's for beginners like who do not know what is music theory and they kind of get even scared when music theory part comes in in their music production uh, career but music theory is one of the most interesting thing if you are actually into music and you want to make your own songs original songs compose your own songs and make melodies and chord progressions and even if you are a beat maker or a beat producer you must know some basics of music theory so that you can you know put your melodies and chords and 808s and basses on right at point so that it hits that professional quality which is out there in the world so if you see this whole video from top till end with adequate gaps and do all the practices that i tell you to do in between this whole video then i am sure that you will know what you need to produce your own songs so first of all like starting this video i want to tell you that knowing a little bit even a little bit of music theory you know it feels really magical so it it's like basically you have something in your mind and you know how to portray it in your daw which is digital audio workstation so you know how to portray it in your daw and have the output that you originally imagined in your mind because if you do not have music theory you imagine something else and you do something else and that doesn't turn out to be good and that's why you need to learn a little bit of basics of music theory and you will be good to go it's just like you know magic when you make a beat and you want that 808 to hit right in the face and at the correct note you will know at what note to put it on because you know the music theory and you know the scales and you know the chords which are going on what are the complementing notes all of that stuff so this is one of the most important aspect of music but the sad part is that people do not tend to learn music theory because they think uh, they can make everything like with their daws and daws have cheat codes and all of that stuff but if you have it in you and you have worked and you know like you know some things and you can imagine stuff in your head and portray it on your daw it helps a lot in improving your uh, work flow yeah so you do not have to see every cheat code every time you make a beat or you even every time you want a chord to make so you do not need to see those pads and those cheats which you have on your mouse pads and your key uh, like monitor screen uh, wallpapers you need to go and see what is this chord and how to make a major minor suspended chord and what all of that stuff so that's where music theory kicks in so let's start as i told you this is kind of a magic for music producers so uh, i have a full fledged course of music production and mixing and mastering as well where i teach whole music theory like whichever is needed for music production in detail in that course and if you want to know the details of that you will get the link in my bio and uh, the link is really simple it's sirgama.com so you can go there and check but you know i'm putting this out here for free like it's approximately it it's going to be half an hour of a video i'm not sure but approximately somewhere there but uh, i want to put it out for free because everyone who loves music deserves at least this much knowledge for free cool so let's get into it okay so now as you can see i have my keyboard here and it has how much i guess five octaves it's one and there's two and there's three and there's there's four and there's five five and one key extra yeah so here are five octaves but the notes that we have in music is 12 every song in this world that you have ever heard or you will hear in future no matter what's the genre and what's the time era when it was made and like which country or geographically from where that song comes if it's indian if it's western if it's you know country music pop spiritual music church music any music that you hear is made only from 12 notes we have only 12 notes that exist in music yeah so uh, this has five octaves this keyboard but as i told you i'll tell you what is an octave don't like get mesmerized right now so there are five black notes and seven white notes yeah so it is c c sharp d d sharp e 
F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. And after B, we come back again to C. So these are the 12 notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. After 12, this whole pattern repeats again. C, C sharp, D, D sharp and so on so forth till B. And then it starts again with C. Same goes here in the lower octave. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E and so on so forth till B. And then again we start with C. So there are only 12 notes which are in the lower section, mid section and the higher section of this keyboard. And even the piano roll that you have in your DAW works the same way. Okay, so we have particular names as I told you right now of the keys in here. Music theory is just, you know, like learning a grammar of a language. If you know grammar of English, it's way easier to communicate and to write and to portray to the other person by conversing that what exactly you want to portray and what you want to say. Exactly, we have music theory in music which helps you to convey your thoughts and feelings and passion via music correctly to the other person or the listener. So now, if we move from one key to the other key, it's called one semitone yeah or a half tone but if we move from one key to a to another key while leaving one key in between like one leave this and go to the next it's called a whole tone or a tone basically so c and d are one tone apart and c and c sharp are one semitone apart no matter the color of the keys it stays the same just like here if we have here we have b and from B, we go to C, it's one semitone apart. But from B, if we go to C sharp, it's one tone apart or a whole tone apart. We also call them half step or full step. So it's one half step, it's one full step. So now let's get to scale and keys. See, basically a common combination of the keys here, which are played in a song, which sounds good in a song, is called the key of a song like it's based on the key of the song but a scale is a set of notes which can be played in conjunction or in addition to the key of the song as of now in modern pop music most probably in most of the cases in most of the songs the key and the scale of the song is same but uh, that's not compulsory in all genres like in blues the key and the scale of the song can be different in some places so basically if a key of a song is let's say c major but and the song is playing and there comes an instrumental kind of a section where the guitar solo is playing or let's suppose it's another genre in which they are playing a saxophone in solo and all of that stuff they can play in an other scale which is in conjunction with the key of the song it sounds different but it sounds good so you don't want to get that deep in it right now but you just have to know that a key of the song is you know a combination of some keys and the root of that key which sounds good in the whole song it is also applicable for all the instruments which are playing in a song no matter what it is it whether it's drums or it's uh, trumpets or piano or synthesizers or guitars or bass whatever it is it's applicable to everything that you are playing in your song so let's get to the type of scales so there are a lot of scales but you don't want to know everything or every scale right now if you are just getting started there are two scales which are majorly used everywhere in all the songs the scales that you want to know about is major and minor these are the scales on which majority of the songs right now are based and i guess more than 80 percent or 90 percent of the songs are based only on minor scale because minor scale is a little bit more emotional kind of a side but yeah so major and minor are what you want to know right now and when you get used to them and you have it in you and you know you know how to work your way with major and minor scales then you if you want you can explore more scales like there are pentatonic and there are aeolian lydian there are a lot of scales so let's come back to the keyboard if we start playing a scale let's go with the first scale which i'll play right now here just c i'll start with this key which is c so the notes in this scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B and then we go back to C. So let's count the number of notes which are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then we come back to the C. So it's not the 8th note, it's the first note again. So now when we move from 
one set of notes to the other set of notes but the note is identical then it is called an octave yeah so if i play a c here if i play a c here and if i play a c here the tone of all these c's are the same actually this this is the magic that i was talking about so the notes of all the c's are same but some has the lower frequencies more and some has the higher frequencies more but the tone and the note of this particular key is same whether it be any other key let's suppose we play f f so the tone is same every key here is f but it's on higher octave then it is a higher pitched f and if it's in lower it's a lower down f yeah so the note doesn't change when the octaves change so what exactly is an octave one octave is if you play a note and you play the identical note after going 12 notes higher or 12 notes lower so we go from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and the 12th note again will be the identical note which we played earlier 12 i guess it makes sense so the same thing happens with any other note here so let's see if we start it with uh f sharp so we go f sharp we play f sharp first then we go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and after 11 the 12th note we have is f sharp again So this F sharp is one octave higher than this F sharp and this F sharp is one octave lower than this F sharp. I hope it makes sense, yeah. So let's come back to the major and minor scales. So the scale that I played in C, like if I start a scale with C, that is a C scale. It's major or minor, it depends solely upon how I play it further. So let's play it once again. Yeah. So this scale that I played right now is a major scale and I'll tell you why. So there is a formula that you can kind of memorize or write. I'll also show you on screen. Write it right now and it will make sense when I'll explain it to you. <sighs> I'm tired of this neighbor of mine, you know, it's been beeping since past what what do I say 30 minutes and I've been trying to make this video for you guys. Frustrating but nothing can stop us. Okay. So now let's get back here. as i told you i played the c major scale the formula for that is whole whole half whole 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 half just write it right now uh it will all make sense when i'll explain it to you so whole whole half whole 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 half i'll also show it to you on screen once you play the root note of the scale which is c you go whole 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 means whole tone or whole step which i told you earlier like leaving one key in between so we go whole step whole step half step whole step whole step whole step half step once again whole whole half whole 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 half again whole whole half whole 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 half yeah so that's the formula for a major scale so the easiest scale to play is c major because it has you know all the white keys in it there is no black keys involved so it's one of the easiest scale so let's get on to a minor scale so the formula for minor scale is whole half whole whole half whole 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 step half step whole step whole step half step whole step whole step so let's play let's play the scale from a the key a because a minor is also the easiest scale to play it also has all the white keys so let's start with a minor so this is a so we go whole half whole whole half whole whole as i told you the formula is whole half whole whole half whole whole so let's go again to the minor scale with a which is the easiest because it has all the white keys this is a we go whole half whole whole half whole whole this is a again of the higher octave Now you know the formula of major and minor scales you can figure out any major and minor scale in this whole keyboard if you want to you just need to know the formula so we figured out c major scale let's figure out c sharp major scale so we go from here whole whole half whole 
whole, whole, half. Then we go back to C sharp. Once again. Similarly, you can figure out any minor scale. Let's figure out F minor. So you go from here, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Similar. So from here we go, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. So now let's get to the naming of notes in a scale. So basically one note is named only once in a scale no matter how many accidentals are there. So accidentals are basically all these black keys. These are known as accidentals. No matter how many accidentals are there in a scale, one note is named only once. So there is no confusion when you, you know, figure out a scale and you have to name the keys. So these black keys, as I told you, are sharps. If this is C, the next note, which is the black, is known as C sharp because it's one step ahead of it. Similarly, this note is one step behind D. So this can also be called as D flat. But you will call it C sharp or D flat depends on what scale you are playing and you are working on. So we start from the root note of the scale and then we go forward and see what to name, which key to name sharp or flat depending on the scale. So see if it's getting you, it can take some time. So I'll show you how it can get a bit confusing if we go to some different scale and where these naming gets a little bit more trickier. So let's play A major scale. So A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Yeah. So each note came only once in the scale. But if we named it differently, just like A, B, and instead of C sharp, if we call it D flat, D flat, but then the next note is D. What do we call it? But one note cannot come twice in a scale. According to nomenclature, one name of a note, like D flat and D both cannot come together in a scale. Hence, we name according to the ascending order we start with. So alphabetically, we go A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Every note came once and this nomenclature is perfect. That's the trick to it. You go from the root note of the scale you are playing. So the root note is the first note that you play in every scale. Any scale you play, the first note is the root note. Whether it's major or minor, doesn't matter. So you have to go from the starting till the end of the scale. You will know which key to name what, either sharp or a flat. Just stay on this rule that you cannot name two keys with the same initial alphabet and you'll be good to go. So there's one exception to this nomenclature, which is A sharp minor. Let's try playing A sharp minor and naming the notes in it. A sharp. Then we go here on C. Then we cannot name it C sharp because we already named C. Then we have to name it D flat. D flat. After this, we have to name it E flat because we already named D. We cannot name D sharp. E flat. After that, we go to F. Then we have to name it G flat because we already named F. G flat. Then we have to name it A flat. But then we cannot name it A sharp again because we have used A flat here, which is also not allowed because we started with A sharp and we cannot name it A sharp again. So here's the contradiction. And we cannot even name G sharp because we named this key right here as G flat. Yeah. Okay. So now let's try naming this scale in a different way. So instead of saying it A sharp, let's try calling it B flat. So let's try with B flat, C, D flat. Then we go E flat, F, G flat, A flat and B flat. So every name in the whole scale came only once. So in this scale, instead of calling it a A sharp minor, we call it a B flat minor. I hope it makes sense. So this was the nomenclature of B flat minor. So let's get on and 
I guess I've told you the formulas for major scale and a minor scale. You can also figure out any minor scale on this whole keyboard with any note as soon as you have the formula which I told you and if you have practiced enough for playing it and even if not playing it, you can just figure it out while playing it. You don't have to be a smooth player to produce music, but you just need to know your way through your MIDI keyboard to produce music and make music that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So let's try just figuring out one major scale and one minor scale. Any other scale that we have played, uh, let's figure out G major. Okay. So let's start with a G. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So that's a G major. And let's figure out any other scale, any minor scale. Let's suppose, let's go with a B minor. So we go B, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. We come back to a B. So that's a B minor. And that's the formula which can help you to figure out any scale from this keyboard. Now let's come to the degrees. Degrees is nothing, it sounds very technical, but it's nothing, it's just the number at which a note resides in a scale. Basically, in a C major scale, C is the first degree of C major because it's the first note, it's the root note. And D, second degree, third degree, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So there are seven degrees in a major scale and seven degrees in a minor scale. So these degrees are nothing. They are just the number at which a note resides in a scale. So these degrees also come in very handy when we start making chords and start, you know, uh, making the whole chord progressions. Like if you want, you can use that type of nomenclature with the degrees and the numbers, but I don't use that much. I, but I'll still tell you if you find that interesting and if you want to adopt that nomenclature while making music. Now let's come to the chords. We have done everything we need to know about major and minor scales. Let's come to the chords of these scales. So chord is basically more than one note, which is two notes or more playing together at one time is the definition of a chord. So if I'm playing just this, it's not a chord. But if I play this with this, it's a chord. And even if I add one note, note here, it's a chord. So playing two or more notes together at one time is a chord. Okay, so now let's start with the easiest scale that we started our learning music theory with, which is a C major scale. There are two types of chords which are majorly used, which are major and minor. There are a hell lot of chords which are in every scale, but you just need to focus on major and minor. And there's one more chord which you need, like which will come right now when, when we'll uh, figure out chords of a scale which is diminished you can use that you can not use that it depends on you but i'll tell you the nomenclature why it's diminished and what's the process of that and what's the rule like why is it called diminished and others are major and minor so it's said that a major chord sounds kind of more happier and a minor chord sounds a little a little more at emotional side or a little bit sad but it all depends on the way you use it. The songs which are made from minor scales using minor chords can sound way more happier than the songs which are made with a major scale and major chords. So it all depends on how you arrange that and how you work. But in general, to differentiate between a chord, whether it's a major or a minor, there is a significant difference in emotions of the chord. So let's hear it. So this is a major chord. But if we play a minor chord, it will sound a little bit more sadder and emotional major minor major minor so that's the difference in the sound of a major and a minor chord and how to figure out what are the chords in the scale that you chose your song to make in so let's suppose you are starting your song and like let's suppose we are starting with a c major scale and we want to make a song in a c major scale then what are the chords which will be supported in this scale which can help you to make the chord progression of your song so let's start with the root note, which is C. C, first rule, if it's a C major scale, the first chord which will start with a C it will be a major chord. And if it's a minor scale, whether it's a C minor or any minor scale, the first chord that will start with the root note will be a minor chord, no matter what. Yeah, so it's a C major scale. If you start with C, then you have to go to the third degree of the scale. The third degree means the third note, which in this case is E. And then
is a major now there's one more kind of a cheat code that you can use to make if you are not you know very comfortable with the degrees like first degree and the third degree and the sixth degree you can use this cheat code which i'm just going to tell you right now so let's suppose the root note is your zero and after this you start counting one two three four when you come on four then you have to go to seven five six seven zero four seven this is not degree degree or anything you, you can just start with your zero then count up to four one two three four then count up to seven five six seven play these three notes together it's a major chord and if you want to play a minor chord you have to count till three instead of four and zero and seven remains the same so we go zero one two three four five six seven it's a minor chord if three becomes four it's a major chord minor chord four major three minor and this rule applies to this whole keyboard doesn't matter what scale you are in uh, we'll just prove it to you right now while playing any other scale so you go zero one two three four major scale five six seven major chord zero one two three four five six seven major chord zero one two three four five six seven minor chord yeah so that's the difference between a major and a minor chord now let's see what chords are there in a c major scale so let's start with c zero one two three this note is not in a c major scale because right now i'll show you the notes which are in a c major scale we find out all the white keys are there this is not there but four is there available so five six seven the first chord will be c major then we go to b zero one two three four four is not there then we have to play three four five six seven b minor then e one two three four is not there then we play three four five six seven e minor then we go f zero uh, one two three four five six seven f major g one two three four five six seven g major a one two three four five six seven a minor b now this is the trickier chord in a major scale this will neither be major nor be minor this will be a diminished chord now what is diminished chord and why is it so let's see so we start with zero then we go one two three four four is not in a c major scale but three is so we have to play three then let's suppose it's a minor chord yeah because it's zero three but then we have to go to seven as well four five six seven but seven is not also available in the major scale this key is not in c major then we have to play six so this chord which is zero three and six is a diminished chord and in the major scale like in c major scale b is diminished now here's a pattern see first chord is major then minor then minor then major then major then minor uh, then diminished so there's a pattern of chords in every major scale so first we go to major minor minor major major minor diminished i'll also show you the screen so it's major minor minor major major minor diminished so this is the pattern that every major scale on this keyboard will follow let's suppose we figure out any other major scale let's go for g major yeah or f major let's go for f major so f major scale starts with f obviously f is the root note of this scale now let's figure out chords in this scale so the first one be as i told you a major chord so zero one two three four five six seven and the next chord will be minor zero one two three four five six seven zero one two three four five six seven again a minor chord and after minor we go to the major zero one two three four five six seven so that's a major after major we have another major and a minor and a diminished zero major and minor
minor and the last one will be diminished. And then we come back again to the F here. So this pattern is followed in every chord. It's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor and diminished. It's a pattern followed by every major scale. Now let's get on to a minor scale. The easiest minor scale we have right now is A minor. So let's start with A. It contains all the white keys. Full step, half step, full step, full step, half step, full step, full step. It's A minor. So as you can see, A minor scale has all the white keys. C major scale has all the white keys. So both the scales are same because they contain the same keys. So the pattern, like the structure is different. It starts with A, it starts with C, but it has, you know, exactly the same keys, not the number, but exactly the same keys there are. The keys which you will play in C major can also be played in A minor. So what's the difference? So every major scale has a relative minor scale. So basically there is always a minor scale which has the same keys which are there in a major scale. For C major, it's A minor. Similarly, for any other scale, it will be any other minor scale and every relative minor scale starts with a sixth degree of a major scale. It can sound confusing, but if you write it down and read it thoroughly what I just said, it will make a lot of sense to you. Yeah. So let's see what's the sixth degree of a C major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. This key is A. So from the sixth degree, whichever minor scale will start, that is a relative minor scale to the C major scale. So let's suppose if you are working on uh, A major scale, let's suppose A major. So we go. Sixth degree of the scale was F sharp. So F sharp minor will have the same exact keys which A major had. So this is a relative minor major relationship. This can be used and this is used in a lot of songs to make them, you know, kind of feel different, but the same keys are playing. So it sounds also good together in a song. So basically two different scales are infused into one to make a bit of complexity and sound a little bit different than the modern pop music, which is going on right now. Now let's talk about inversions of a chord. So inversion is nothing but just changing one note of a chord to any other octave so that the root note of the chord is not the starting point of the chord. So the inversion as I told you is the changing of a note from one octave to the other so that you know the first note of the chord is not the root note of the chord. Let's play C major chord. It's C, E and G. Yeah, C, E and G. But if I want a little bit of a warmer texture and want to make it sound a little bit different, then I can shift this G to a lower octave, which is here. It will sound the same. It's a C major chord only because it has C, E and G. But just the G is shifted from the higher octave to the lower octave. Doesn't change the chord, basically. So it gives a little bit more warmth than this. It just feels a little more human, you know. So this helps a lot when you are arranging your chord progressions in your digital audio workstation. So basically what happens is if you have a chord progression which is going from let's go to the first degree, then the third, then the sixth, then back to the fourth. So the chord at the sixth degree will have the seventh number of note which we talked upon earlier in a very higher octave. And you can bring that particular note one octave lower, which is in sense with all the other degree chords that we were working in. So it sounds a little bit similar. It doesn't sound like one chord is way up too high in the octaves and the other chord is way, you know, in the middle of the octaves and one is in the higher octave. So you do not want that to make it a bit more human and sound more warm. You have to invert that chord and bring it in the zone in which the chords are playing. Now let's come to the melody. Melody is the lead combination of notes that are playing in a song which is the most catchiest part of the song people kind of sing throughout the melody like the vocal composition is also the main melody of the song but even in the instrumental songs like EDMs and the song which has drops the melody is played through an instrument which is the most prominent and it is the most memorable part of the song and people can hum through that melody so that is the most important thing that you want to figure it out and there are two ways to go about it. The first thing is you figure out the chord progression and then you play melodies along with that which go well with that chord progression and are in that scale. But there's a reverse way also like the second way which I'm going to tell you is the way that I work a lot 
So first of all, if I make an original song, the most important part for me is the melody. So I do not rely on chord progressions first. I rely on the melody that how is it sounding if the melody is catchy enough. So you do not remember and you do not even know what are the chords playing in a song. But you always remember what was the melody of the song. You can sing the melody. So that's the most important part for me. And the first thing that I do when I make an original song is figure out the melody that I want to go with ahead in the song and make that the most prominent part. So I work a lot to get a great melody which sounds right just by you know sometimes playing on the keyboard just messing up here and there messing up with my DAWs and other instruments and synthesizers a lot of that stuff but once I have the melody that I like after that I figure it out at what BPM the melody will sound good and what are the chords which are going well in with the melody and what the scale is in which I am playing the melody. So I figure all of these things later. Once I figure out what's the melody, then I figure out the scale, the BPM, the chords which will go well and overall sounds together great as a song. So that's the second approach and the one I follow most of the time. But uh, you can try both and see what you know works for yourself. There are a lot of people, great producers and famous producers and DJs as well who works with chords first. They figure out the chord progression, then they figure out the melody. So it's all about what makes you keep going and what helps your workflow to make better songs in lesser time. Now let's come to rhythm. It's one of the most important part. Now the rhythm is basically they, uh, it's divided into bars and beats. When we say a rhythm or a bar, we have four beats per bar. In a modern music era and in which the most of the songs are being made, it's four by four time signature, which means there are four beats in a bar. So one, two, three, four. So this completes a bar. So if one note is a length of a bar, so like this one note is a length of a bar, it's called a whole note. So if one note, one note is a length of a bar, then it's called a whole note. But two beats or if half of the length of the bar is whole note, then two beats or half of the length of the bar is half note. So if four beats, one bar, full note, then half or two beats, which is half bar, it's half note. So in between the notes, there are quarter notes. Just like I told you, one, two, three, four. These are four beats in one bar. Now, if we divide them in between half bars, we introduce four half bars, then we count it as one and two and three and four and these are half uh, half bars. Then we introduce quarter bars. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Yeah. So you can go so on so forth. You can introduce like a lot of stuff more. I don't know what to even call it. But full notes, half notes, and quarter notes. So one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So these are the rhythms that you can work. So you can know, you know, 16 note guitars, muted guitars, one yana, two yana, three yana, four yana. These are the things that keep the rhythm going, change the rhythm of the song and change a lot of stuff in between. You can go full somewhere, you can go half and you play hi-hats on 16 notes. So quarter note is the hi-hat, you know, when you play it, that kind of stuff. So that's the rhythm of the song. It is a part of music theory and it's it goes way too deep, but we do not need that right now. All we need to know is full note, half note and quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four e and a. Just right now, after this, I'll show you some of the practices and exercise that you have to do and we'll sum up everything we learned. So the first thing that we learned is there are 12 notes in music and 12 notes make every song that you have heard and there are octaves. Every octave contains these 12 notes. The nomenclature of uh, the scales, there are two scales that we learned, major and minor. Formulas of major scales and minor scales are here on your screen right now. And you can also rewind the video anytime you want and watch the whole deconstruction and construction of the major minor scales that we did. And after major minor scales, we did the chords in that. What are the chord structure? There is a pattern of chords in a major structure, which is right now here on your screens. And similarly, there is a pattern of minor structure also like chord structure in minor scales which is also right here on your screens you can take a screenshot take a picture and keep it with yourself until you memorize everything then we inverted chords chord inversions changing one note to the other note to keep every chord in that particular octave you can do it with any chord then diminished chords are also really important if you use it correctly then you can you know this chord can do wonders if you are from india and even if you are not from india you must have heard that song ambar saria from the movie fukre 
it uses the diminished chord very beautifully. So in the starting, there's a guitar riff, ting, 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 ting. And when that guitar riff ends, it ends with a diminished ting, ting, ting. That particular chord is a diminished chord. I might not be sounding very great right now, but you can hear that guitar riff. It starts with the major, then goes to the minor, then major, minor, and there's a proper riff. And when it ends, before the vocal starts, it ends with a beautiful diminished chord. So if you know how to use your chords right, it can sound way too beautiful if you include that chords particularly in between some riff or some kind that kind of stuff. Then comes the melody. Melody, as I told you, is the combination of notes which is the most prominent part of the song and which you want people to remember if they remember the name of your song. So that has to be in the scale. Everything that you play has to be in the scale in which your song is and also the chords which you'll play should be in the scale and in the key in which your song is being made. Then there are two approaches that we talked about. Chord progression first or melody first. I told everything in detail. You can just go for whichever way you like. Then we come back to rhythm as I told you. One bar contains four notes if the time signature is four by four. Also, if you want me to make a video in detail for time signatures, like there are various time signatures, four by four, three by four, six by eight. If you want me to make a particular video on those, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help you guys and make a new tutorial specifically for time signatures. And I guess that's it for the crash course of music theory that you want and everything is there in the video that you need to get you started in music theory. Watch this video again from starting till end. Watch this video a number of times. Watch this as much as you want. So everything that I tell, if it's too fast for you, slow down the video or pause it. Like, you can also watch it in sections. Watch the first section. Take your time. Take a day. Learn everything. Get a hold of everything. Then go to the second section. So it will make more sense. If you take all the video once and watch the half hour of the video and you want to be a genius in music theory in this particular small crash course, that's not going to happen. Take your time. Start with, uh, you know, basics. Take a day. Learn that particular section. Then go on to the next section. Then take a day and learn that section. Practice that section. Practice each and everything multiple times, only then you're going to get it. And trust me, once you get it, it's going to be magic. And everything's going to feel magical when you are making music. Yeah. So I guess that's it for today's video. This is one of the most important video I have ever made for everyone. It's important. Like even if you know basics of music theory, there must be something that, you know, you can get through this video. And I have also made a lot of videos and a lot of playlists which will come right now in the end screen. And if you wish, like, please watch them and like and subscribe and share it if you learned if you felt good and if you liked what i taught you in the video subscribe it helps me a lot it helps the channel it motivates me to make more and more videos and you can also directly support me i have a link of buy me a coffee here down in the description you can go there and support if you want you can also get some exclusive things if you take a membership there but that's on you like you can go and explore there and also you can follow me on instagram you can but please follow me on instagram and i have the username somewhere here and the link in the description and i guess that's it see you next friday next video with the next insight and next knowledgeable stuff that i am kind of trying to get out here in public without getting anything in return so that's it see you next friday with the next video with the next insightful knowledgeable video that i am here making for you guys and publishing it for free on youtube please subscribe till then share stay safe take care bye bye see you peace out and i'll shut up and i'll go bye leave leave leave